Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, thank you for being here. If you join us uh, live, absolutely wonderful. And if you happen to watch this on a replay, then please hashtag replay. I look forward to having any and all comments. So as you know, this is Lisa Bubari, your favorite uh, expert hypnotherapist. And uh, I have a healing center in Glendale. Someone asked me how come I'm not introducing myself with the name of my business, which is Heal Within, right? Hello, Catherine. Hello, Heidi. Thank you for being here. Today's topic is how we as humans deal with traumatic things that happen to us and stressors. I met this uh, gentleman approximately a week ago. And as we're sitting and talking, I met him for specifically for my nonprofit. And as we were discussing, uh, the question was, uh, it, it turned out to talk about his life and what was happening because he lost his wife two and a half years ago to cancer, stage four cancer. It just, he was sharing the information of how she was all fine doing everything for their child, which is uh, 10 years old right now, and that he was working. He used to be outside working all the time was a stay-at-home mom that he didn't know much about taking care of the child, the schooling and everything, and every time he came home, it was late. So they only had weekends with each other. And two and a half years ago, she passed. So why am I sharing? Because what he did next So by the time we met, and he came in for a session, two sessions, is because he was dealing with a lot of panic and anxiety. A lot of panic and anxiety because he had stuffed so much um, grief, so much anxiety inside him and not expressed it, that it, it was an overload. Working 16 hours. 
until late hours of night. So his parents were taking care of the son. But what the therapist told him was that when they asked the son, "What did he miss the most?" He said, "My mom is dead, but I miss my dad. I miss." Motherless children cope with the death of their mom because we work through with mindfulness, sound healing, creative writing. So when he came in to have his session, his hypnosis session, to deal with his panic and anxiety, it was then that he learned how much. He had disconnected from feelings, and that's it was big for him. It was big to realize, thinking that he was more in control when he was working, but he had been spinning out of control. So, isn't this beautiful? The way we all find a way to cope with things. Until it doesn't work. So by breaking down, he shed so much, so much like bundles of grief, and releasing it, and sharing, and talking about it. And now, spending more time with his son, reducing his workload. Even feeling healthier because he started biking. He started taking time with his son, playing, and play in a way is joy. Play is joy. Biking is bringing joy, and that's one of the things I asked him. I said, "What would you want to do?" He said, "Well, I haven't done. I haven't gone bicycling." In such a long time, from the time that I was in college, and I said, "Does your son have a bike?" He said, "Yeah, but he goes out with his friends." And I said, "Why not go biking with your own son?" So last week, they went to Santa Monica, and on the pier, they went biking on the pier, and he was sharing that they went and sat at the beach on the sand, and they had such a great time. Just the two of them, and they talked about mom. They talked about how they missed her. So we all deal with grief in a different way. How did hypnosis and hypnotherapy help him? It helped him connect with his true essence. To have this quiet time to hear his own feelings. To begin opening and embracing, literally embracing who he is, forgiving himself for doing the best that he could 
with what he knew and then giving himself permission to have fun, to have a good time with his son and realizing that by having a good time, it doesn't mean that he's happy and he has forgotten his wife's memory, but that by being happy, they are bringing more joy and life because that's what she would want. I don't think she would want miserable husband and child, right? So by meeting him last week, he was sharing how much this has helped him see things in a different perspective. So here's my question. Hello, Sedajan. Hi, Becky. My question to you is, how do you cope with grief? How do you cope with certain losses? We all go through loss. I know when I was a little kid, of course, my God, this is one thing that has been embedded in my memory. I was probably about six years old, seven years old, and not knowing what death is, right? Um, my grandmother found out that our godparents, my godfather, had passed away. And I didn't understand it, so she was crying. So my parents were out that night. And I, for whatever reason, I stayed up uh, all night. And as my parents walked in the door, I ran and opened the door, went down the stairs, and I said, Mommy, Mommy, uh, Onkli died. So here's a child giving a message without understanding what has happened, even though I knew Grandma was crying, not knowing why she's crying. And the impact that it had on my mom, it was devastating because I saw her fall two steps down. And luckily, my dad was there. He held on to her. And to me, it, it, I for, completely forgot about what I had said. But the image of my mom's uh, reaction was more traumatic for me of what I had said that I went into self-punishment for days and days. I was punishing myself for what I said. So, and then we've had so many others in my life from my grandfather, which was the most horrific thing for me, and then others. So how we cope with it, what we hold on to, my question is, how long do we hold on to that grief? And when do we give ourselves permission to live? Because it is by living that we begin to bring more life. We never forget our loved ones, right? We never do. So in a way, what we call memory, memory is small little pictures that are embedded in our psyche, in our subconscious mind. And that's how the blueprint of everything from habits, behaviors, everything is really embedded in our psyche. So when we want to make changes, I say, start with who you are, start with yourself, giving yourself permission to accept what is, embrace yourself for who you are and everything that you feel, and then start by evolving, by living fully. So even as I am sitting here, there's so much happening outside of my office, even inside my office, sounds. But what is happening outside 
does not affect me with you unless someone opened the door and walked in and shifted this energy. We are all energy. And as some of my um, holistic people call it, it's like we cross the bridge. My grandmother uh, being a true Christian, she would say is that it's about God, God's will. And she read the Bible three times from one page to the other. And she would tell me the stories so and share the stories about God and Jesus. But every one of us deals with grief in a different way. And I want to be there to help you if you need a different way of holding hand, hand holding. If there is a way that you have been suffering and you can't get out of this grief and sadness, I want you to also realize we all have that time, right? But eventually we have to let go because by holding that energy, we also hold the energy of the person who has passed on. So in a way, we're blocking energy if you believe in energy. So by lighting candle, by releasing their spirit, by releasing their energy, and by letting ourselves have more joy and life and living, we live and bring more positiveness and love. Because whatever time we shared with them, that's what we share. That's what we remember. That's what we bless. And we are blessed by the time that we had the time together. You see, even as children and parents, no matter how much we love our parents and parents love, truly love their children, they get mad, they get angry. We get, we get upset with our parents. It doesn't mean that we don't love them. So how can we constantly be happy, be good and everything? It's not possible. It's not possible to do that kind of being pure and loving and goodness at every minute. But having guilt is not also possible. It's not humane. And it's not good human way of living. So the best we can do, the best you can do, is to accept and say, thank you for the time we had together. And now I can begin to live. And that is exactly what he started doing. He has filled his life with more joy with his son and his friends. And they are taking small little steps of going places and having mom in their heart. So I wanted to share that. Because no matter what happens in our history uh, about who we are as culture, as religion, as ancestry, we're all human. We all live, cherish. But we must also keep living and expressing because what we suppress, eventually, it's going to explode. So just the same way as we blow into a, uh, a balloon and there's only so much air a balloon can take because, yes, no matter how much it is, every balloon has different sizes, right? Helium balloon, 
this much, hot air balloon that much, small balloons this much. So eventually, if we put too much oxygen and blow into it, it's going to burst. And I think that's the way we as humans are. So finding, finding the serenity, the grace within ourselves, accepting life as it is, and sharing it is the most beautiful thing that there is. With that, because of my nonprofit, because of bringing those children that have lost their mom, the children that we help between eight and 17 with healing, so they are no longer holding on to that grief, the guilt, the shame, whatever it is that they are feeling, that they live life fuller and thrive to become healthier adults. We're also creating a support system for the fathers to come and express and share. So you see, this place of heal within, it's truly helping all of us heal within. And with that, I open, I open to you for you to share, for you to express how may I help you either through hypnotherapy, stress management, it doesn't matter, or just holding space for you. Henry, we are all energy instead of matter. Yes, we are. We are all energy. And it doesn't matter if someone was sitting next to me or where you are. I am blessed by having this kind of a connection. And I know at any time, if I want to, or you want to, we can just get on FaceTime and connect, connect to this incredible mechanism that someone has created that brings us together. Look at how much appreciation there is. We're appreciating this camera, this modality, this space, this journey, Mother Earth, you, me, our loved ones, that in itself is called love. This morning, I shared something about love. Last night, I had a client, and after our session, it, it, it was just beautiful. She opens her eyes. She was in hypnosis for over 45 minutes, and as she opens her eyes, she says, I love you, woman. She does not love me, per se. But she loved the feeling she had through my guidance, through the technique. But what she loved was her experience when she was within in her oneness, in her quietness, and as I am giving the suggestions, how deeply she was moved by her own thoughts, her own feelings. You see, it's shifting perception from negativity, even the worst thing that has happened, if we see it in a different way and forgive and accept ourselves. That's called love. That's the energy. That's pure joy of knowing that you matter. She mattered. And as she came to full conscious awareness, what a smile. She valued. And in a way, by saying, I love you, I mattered. I mattered for the work I did. My work had value. And that is what I bring to you. And hopefully that I can make a difference in your life, the life of your loved ones. If you know of a family that has lost a loved one and the children need healing to heal within, by all means, we are here for them. 
The name of our nonprofit is called HealWithinInternational.org. You can go and visit and see all the things that we offer and the ones we help. Every essence matters. We help the family. We help the fathers. So in a way, is bringing joy, is bringing God's light. And yes, I do work with the grace of God and the energy of the universe. So I will open and she expressed it. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. See, this is one of the most miracle things, Henry. Um, <laughs> and yes, I have this little one visiting today. And uh, when I got this little one, <laughs> he was supposed to be a Maltese, right? And he's grown to become this big, I call him big, he's 10 months old, but he's become this big love bug of uh, a Maltese interior. And sometimes he is a terror, but he is all love. So today, uh, because I did not have a client in the morning, except two meetings over the phone, he became a guest, guest of our healing center. And it's so good to have uh, and the energy, the energy of dogs, uh, which is loyalty, which is trust, which is pure, genuine love, come in to our healing center. Uh, I remember having him here one time when we were uh, with the kids. A few months ago, we had some of the children here for our nonprofit. And, oh my God, they played, they loved everything. So in a way, that loving energy comes from all places, right? Dogs are one of the best ways to play and remind us how to be playful. With this, I thank you for being here. I thank you for being present. By all means, thank you, Marianos. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for being a part of Heal Within. And I'm going to say something. Starting November, I've been saying this, it's now coming to fruition. I'm going live next Tuesday, and it's going to be Heal Talk with Lisa instead of Heal Talk Tuesdays. It's Heal Talk with Lisa, and I'm going to have an incredible guest. Christine Sosa will be our special guest. And we will go live speaking about enriching, enlightening, and engaging stuff. Real talk and inspiring stories. God bless you all. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, may the universal light surround you. Mm -hmm.